it has now been two years since the El Faro tragedy. The cargo ship crossed paths with Hurricane Joaquin and it sank, killing all 33 crew members aboard. And today, the U.S. Coast Guard released its final report into the cause of this disaster. First Coast News' Stephanie Kim begins our team coverage. She was there when the report was released this morning. She joins us now with a breakdown of what we've learned tonight. Stephanie? That's right. Coast Guard Captain Jason Neubauer said that he thinks of the families of El Faro victims every day. He released this 199 page report today. He says in hopes the recommendations will help avert similar catastrophes. Exactly two years since the El Faro sank on its way from Jacksonville to Puerto Rico, the U.S. Coast Guard presented the conclusion of its investigation. Our survival experts said that it, the crew may have had a chance. The report incorporates 289 hours of testimony from 79 witnesses. It places primary blame on three entities, the ship's captain, the ship's owner, Tote Maritime, and the American Bureau of Shipping, or ABS, the agency responsible for the ship's inspections. I feel like the material condition of the vessel, especially in the ventilation trunks, is partially on the Coast Guard to detect. We're the last safety net in that uh, detection. It also cites a weary crew, an aging ship, and poor weather forecasts among the reasons why the vessel sank during Hurricane Joaquin. As a result, the board issued 39 safety recommendations, 31 designed to prevent future tragedies, four administrative changes to enhance post-accident response, and four suggested civil penalties against tote maritime. There are several recommendations in the report that point to areas where we can enhance training, uh, oversee ACS competency, and also be more transparent. Local Maritime Attorney Rod Sullivan represented the family of a man who died on the El Faro. He says a key finding following the tragedy, the Coast Guard scrapped three ships that were approved by ABS that were deemed too dangerous to sail. What they found is when they look at these older ships, they're finding corrosion in areas that are not readily accessible and that corrosion is affecting the watertight integrity of the ships, meaning they're more likely to sink. Another big detail, how the ship's captain survived, the Coast Guard board would have pursued a negligence claim against him. He was very straightforward in saying if the captain was alive that he would be prosecuted for loss of his license, at the very least negligence and potentially criminal negligence too. Sullivan says in this detailed report, one big area that could have been investigated more is the life-saving equipment on board. In the 21st century, 33 people should not go into the ocean and none of them survive. I don't care how bad the weather is. There should be life-saving equipment that enables them to get off the ship, get into the water, and survive for a few days out there. And we didn't really examine that that closely. The American Bureau of Shipping, one of the entities blamed for the tragedy, released this statement saying, quote, ABS is dedicated to its mission of protecting life, property, and the environment, and is committed to working with the Coast Guard and the U.S. shipping industry in improving safety standards and applying lessons learned. And to read this full report, we have it posted on our website at firstcoastnews.com. Live in the studio, Stephanie Kim, First Coast News, on your side.